Hi, this is Reverb Audio, and we are continuing looking at uh, Foucault's uh, Grand Utopia. Uh, e, uh, it is let's say E M Evil. Yeah, I didn't want to miss the exact model number. So we are looking at this uh, fantastic, iconic loudspeaker, which is unarguably the most legendary and one of the most expensive high-end loudspeakers of all time. And uh, this is where we left off at the previous episode where I was talking about the efficiency and sensitivity of this gigantic gargantuan loudspeaker, which has basically, as, as we go in the world of loudspeakers, is the size of a full-grown male lion. And uh, as far as the laws of physics are concerned, the bigger the uh, size of the loudspeaker, the greater dynamics and low frequency extension it allows. And the sheer size of this big loudspeaker would qualify it if it was used to uh, utilize all its potential to basically roar like a lion and have un virtually uncompressed ultimate dynamics, or I would say uh, utopia or utopistic uh, dynamics. And uh, what we are, are seeing is actually that this is what it delivers in the uh, range of dynamics, is that it has the body of a lion, seemingly, and it roars like a kitten. It has the dynamic range of a kitten. And, uh, and the reason for that is that instead of using the entire volume of the cabinet to support the woofer, they are using, uh, according to the laws of physics that we can calculate, approximately 70 to 80 liters of air to suspend the woofer. And that basically cripples the dynamics of the loudspeaker. So now... Uh, we are looking at the comparison of uh, the iconic Altec Voice of the Theater A5 and Foucault's Grand Utopia EM Evo. And why I'm doing that? Because that Altec A5, it came out in the 40s and now we are 2020. So basically we have about 75 years or more of progress between these two loudspeakers so this was the most iconic loudspeaker of its time and this is the most iconic loudspeaker of our ages 75 years ago so what has changed between the two let's look at it and 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 the best thing is to compare these two because both of them have low frequency extension virtually almost within a hertz, minus 6 dB at 40 hertz or 39 hertz. So just about exactly the same for both loudspeakers. And they have the same size and footprint. So basically, if you put one or the other in your house, you will get uh, comparatively the same feeling of the same amount of weight or mass or, or size of loudspeaker. Uh, actually, the, the Grand Utopias are taller than the A5, but the A5 are a little bit wider and the Utopia is, is, is quite a bit deeper than the A5. So I would say ultimately the Grand Utopia is more impressive and massive in real life than the A5s are. And what do they offer? In extra because they have the size advantage to them and they also have 75 years of engineering so we should be like dozens of generations later in technological advances so what does our history of humankind have to offer for three quarters of century of loudspeaker development did it translate or did it not First of all, let's look at the high frequency extension. So there clearly the Grand Utopia 
EM Evo has shown a tremendous process of evolution over the A5, which only extended up to 17 kHz. Now, if you are an audio skeptic, you would say that uh, this is, let's call a BS on that, because uh, there's very few among us who can hear up to 17 kHz, and even those who can hear up to 17 kHz, you don't hear above that. So what difference does it make that I have an extra octave on top of that if I can't hear it? And now comes the smart guys uh, who tell you that it's affecting you at the subconscious level. And, and yeah, that's true. Uh, what we hear... Uh, there's a part of the music that we hear that occurs at the conscious level. And part of the hear, you also hear, but you don't know you are hearing it. And that octave above that is something that you don't know about. And now the curious thing about that is that uh, they started pushing these uh, higher frequency limits on the Utopia already in the CDH. And at the CD age, you know, guys, that uh, the, the, the Red Book CD format is really hard stopping basically around 20 kilohertz. And if you want to go to 25 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, basically you are going through the uh, oscillations and the problems of a brick wall filter and, and all the digital nasties that uh, creep on around that region. And, uh, and, and you're going to get bombarded at the subconscious level with a bunch of digital nasties that will masquerade as improved high-frequency response. And now you can say that we have high-resolution audio, we extend far higher than that, and there's no uh, brick wall filtering problems around 20 kilohertz. So, so yes, if you are using your utopias now with high-res material, you will find them much more pleasant than, than uh, listening to Red Book CDs. And so uh, EM Evo, the evolution part, checks out for high-frequency extension for sure. So 75 years, yes, we made progress. And now, the other part. Let's have a look at the efficiency rating. And now we have progressed to 86 dB per wattmeter from 105 dB per wattmeter. This means not only that we need about 100 times more watts to reach the same uh, uh, volume, uh, to enjoy the same music, instead of a 1 watt amplifier, you need a 100 watt. So if you were happy with this, with an 8 watt amp, then you need an 800 watt for the Grand Utopia for a similar experience. Unfortunately, this also means not only that you need 100 times more watts, but it also means the dynamic range they can reproduce is 1% of the dynamic range uh, the A5 could reproduce. And why is that? How the physics of that work? That's a whole topic in itself, so I have to let's just let you all hang in suspense to find that out. So now we will just move on. So, as you would say that, okay, we, it, it checks out, there was an evolution with the tweeters and a devolution with the efficiency. Uh, so basically, we, we plus one, minus one, it seems that there was no uh, improvement happening. So, but we know, we've been told so many times that there was just tremendous driver development happening over the uh, 75 years. Uh, what happened to that? Was it lost? These drivers are supposed to be just so much uh, better than what we had 75 years ago. So what is that gigantic leap in technology doing? Why are we not getting it? Mm. Now we have to look at the shrunk dynamic range. What is the consequence of that? What's the consequence of dropping from 105 to 86? 
it means that uh, now we require 100 times more power to, uh, to get the same SPL as we required before. This also means we require massively larger cone excursions. And massively larger cone excursions require massively higher damping factor imp uh, requirements from your amplifier and massively higher ability uh, of control and massively higher rigidity from your cone. And uh, so basically what is happening that the massive advances in driver technology are required to compensate for those new issues that are brought on by low efficiency technology. So we are creating those leaps and bounds just to undo the damage that the low efficiency is causing us. However, why are loudspeaker manufacturers doing this? Why are they dropping the efficiency, the sensitivity, why they know that uh, it's compromising everything. Uh, one of that is that audiophiles, us, we demand high power amplifiers. And the only way to make a high power amplifier sound good is to mate it with a low efficiency loudspeaker. Because if you hook up this guy to a high power amplifier, it will show you its Achilles heel. The emperor will be will become naked, but the uh, low efficiency will keep a lot of massive issues on the side of an amplifier and cabling and source hidden in uh, in the veil of uh, undetectability. And the other thing is that. When we compress the dynamic range massively, then the per perceived base energy, energy will be much higher. So basically, when, uh, what is dynamic compression? What is dynamic range? It means that dynamic range is when you have like a big signal and next to that you have a tiny signal. You can appreciate the differences between that. When you compress the dynamic range, then that tiny signal will seem to be much louder compared to that big signal. So as the dynamic range is compressing, the music is, the bass inner energy is going higher and higher because what should have been a tiny peak in your bass energy, now it becomes hundredfold greater. And, and that creates an instant consumer bias. And when you hear a compressed uh, production, you will, in reproduction, you will immediately say, this has more bass. And you are right, it has more bass because the bass is compressed and what should have been quiet sound, now it's a loud sound. If we are compressing something by 20 dB, it means that the soft sound will be now 100 times louder. And that creates tremendous consumer bias. And it was one of the key driving factors that has created today or high-end world. And that's what made it diverge severely from high-fidelity road. So now our high-end equipment are not there to give us an accurate rendering of, uh, of the original event, but they are there to sculpt and alter, I would say, to distort the recording into a form that's much more pleasing to an average consumer. So thank you guys for tuning in and we will continue with the frequency measurements at the third and final installation of this grand Focal Utopia review. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, share your comments. Kaplach.